Hey, this is Dr. K from my medical school, and we're going to talk about therapeutic induced hypothermia. This is commonly seen in the ICU setting. So when a patient cardiac arrests, they develop multiple complications, and a lot of it is due to lack of perfusion. So if the heart isn't pumping, there's a lack of cardiac output, that means the oxygen supply to your end organs does not meet the demand by those organs. Now, the most common cause of death in patients who have cardiac arrest outside the hospital is neurological injury. Just because of under-resuscitation, their brain is perfused very well, and uh, they develop injury secondary to that. Now, what is therapeutic-induced hypothermia? Well, it's when we actively reduce or decrease a patient's body temperature. And the range we usually set is from 32 to 34 degrees Celsius, or 89.6 to 93.6. 2 degrees Fahrenheit. And we do this actually within hours after cardiac arrest, just because it decreases the risk of neurological injury. Think about it. If your body is colder, um, the metabolism decreases in each cell. And when metabolism decreases in each cell, your demand for oxygen decreases as well. Of note, they have done studies that show that body temperatures, when they're greater than 37 degrees Celsius within the first two days after a cardiac arrest, it actually increases your risk of death. So the point of therapeutic-induced hypothermia is to reduce uh, the rate of death with cardiac arrest and it also induce end organ injury, specifically neurological injury after cardiac arrest. So the indications for therapeutic-induced hypothermia are if the patient is not following commands or having any purposeful movements after arrest. Now, contraindications include an active, uncontrollable bleeding or if the patient has a do not resuscitate order. The reason why for both of these is that therapeutic-induced hypothermia will lead to further bleeding. So it will compromise the patient even more if they're actively bleeding. And two, if the patient has expressed wishes they do not want to be further resuscitated, you need to respect that. So therapeutic-induced hypothermia generally comes with a protocol for each hospital. And usually it varies from hospital to hospital, but there are some general common characteristics. Now, no specific regimen has been shown to improve outcomes over any other, but generally the hypothermia goal for therapeutic-induced hypothermia has been from 32 to 34 degrees centigrade. Now, the goal should be reached within the first six hours after cardiac arrest with at least maintenance for at least about 12 to 24 hours. Now, animal and human studies um, show that there's no benefit if you reach this goal temperature, body temperature, six hours after um, cardiac arrest. Um, this is probably likely due to the fact that the lack of perfusion and the injury resulting from that uh, occurs within the first six hours. So after that, it probably doesn't help uh, very much. Now, there's some data about therapeutic-induced hypothermia and neurological injury. So this first report, um, described as the early achievement of mild therapeutic hypothermia and neurological outcome after cardiac arrest, it was published in 2009, was a prospective observational study. And basically, it demonstrated that the less time it took to reach the goal, therapeutic-induced hypothermia body temperature, pretty much less severe than neurological injury. So if you're decreasing metabolism in the less amount of time, um, the perfusion injury wasn't as great, uh, and patients did better. Now, there was an, a, another study that was called the Outcome Timing and Adverse Events and Therapeutic Hypothermia After Out-of-Hospital Cardiac Arrest. And this study was a retrospective study that looked at um, patients who ha had cardiac arrest outside the hospital and then underwent this therapeutic hypothermia protocol uh, within the hospital. And they found there was really no improvement in outcomes when goal TIH temperature was reached even within that three to six hour range. So there is a lot of conflicting data, but we still do it just because if you're doing heroic measures and there's a chance you can improve outcomes, you might as well. Now, a very large complication is shivering. Now, your body naturally shivers when it gets cold because it's trying to rewarm itself with all the uh, muscular contraction. So this raises your body temperature. And because this raising a body temperature with shivering this actually causes a delay in reaching your goal body temperature 
within that first six hour window period. But the things you can do, so high dose sedatives uh, are an option to reduce the shivering. So giving propofol and fentanyl drips um, kind of as needed, um, also with some Versed, um, it can help reduce the amount of shivering that your patients experience. In addition, you can also do neuromuscular blockers and paralyze the patient, and it's pretty effective in stopping those muscular contractions, but you really got to worry about seizures in this case because patients won't present um, with those uh, jerking of all their limbs because now you've just paralyzed them. So generally, you want to continue with EEG. Also, it's important to do some temperature monitoring when you're doing the therapeutic-induced hypothermia protocol. The core temperature should be really monitored continuously. Now, central venous temperature is generally the gold standard, but we do have alternatives like esophageal, bladder, or, or rectal temperatures if central venous temperatures are not available. Now, let's say everything goes well, and now the patient is improving, and you start rewarming them. So generally, you want to raise the temperature slowly. Um, in rewarming patients, you want to go about 0.5 degrees Celsius per hour. Um, so 0.25 to 0.5 is kind of generally our, our preferred rewarming rate. Um, the, probably low and slow is probably the best way to go. Now we've talked about the benefits of therapeutic induced hypothermia. Let's talk about the side effects. So you can know a significant coagulopathy, meaning large amounts of bleeding can develop, and that's why active bleeding is a contraindication. Infections are promoted, arrhythmia is just with the rewarming of the heart, and the lack of perfusion during the cardiac arrest will promote the heart to develop arrhythmias. Hyperglycemia, you also can develop a post-hypothermic uh, diuresis, as well as um, it affects drug metabolism. So resuscitating the patient while they're uh, under a hypothermia protocol is also difficult. So this is a brief review of therapeutic induced hypothermia. If you like, give this a like. If you have any comments about this video, place any comments down below. And most importantly, subscribe. This is Dr. K from a medical school, and I'll see you next time.